Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. In this video, we're going to be talking about diffusion and osmosis. So diffusion is something that you are actually quite familiar with. You can imagine diffusion happening. It's not a terribly difficult thing to uh, understand. If I take a glass of water and I plop into it a drop of food coloring and I don't stir it up, I just drop the food coloring in, plop, and I leave it there to do its thing, and I come back 12,000 years later, okay, that's probably way longer than I need. Let's say I come back an hour later. Uh, what is going to have happened to that food coloring in that glass? It's going to have spread out, right? And by then, it's probably evenly spread out all throughout the glass. And if you sat there and watched it, you would actually be able to see it diffuse or spread out. Diffuse is just a fancy, sciencey word that means to spread out. That's all it means. Diffuse means to spread out. So things spread out naturally because particles are in constant motion. If I did walk away from a glass for 12,000 years, as long as it was sealed so it didn't all evaporate, the water inside that glass would constantly it would continue to move. It's never going to just, the molecules aren't just going to stop moving because they get tired and they're like, man, where is that guy? He said he was coming back in an hour and it's been 12,000 years. I'm just gonna rest. And the molecules just keep moving and bumping into each other and moving around. They're getting energy from the warm temperature in the environment and so they continue to move around. And that constant motion and bumping into each other causes them to evenly spread out to fill a container. So, and that's the goal. They're, the goal that they have, yeah, they don't really have a goal, but what happens to them, because they don't think, they're not like, oh, this is my goal today, put it on my checklist. But what they do is they evenly spread out throughout the container. So given enough time, a substance is going to spread out until it is evenly spread out in a container. Uh, the same thing happens in your house when you cook. So you're up in your bedroom, and somebody's downstairs cooking cookies or bread or whatever delicious thing they're cooking, and you're taking a nap, but then you smell the deliciousness and you wake up and you're like, ooh, somebody's making something yummy. That How did that smell go from the kitchen to your snout? Well, the answer is diffusion. The particles are spreading out in their container, and this case, the container is your house, and the particles are moving around their environment, spreading out further and further from the source, which is the oven or the stove, until they reach your nose. And then you smell them, and you're like, that's delicious. Uh, same thing would happen with a scented candle. Okay, that is diffusion, and it happens inside of cells. So, whether they are proteins, and we've talked about proteins in another video, or amino acids, or water, or anything that's in the cytoplasm of your cells, it's going to spread out. It's going to diffuse throughout the cells, spread out evenly, and that allows materials to move around the cells. And sometimes they even diffuse across the cell membrane because the cell membrane has little tiny holes in it. And we call that uh, semi-permeable, which is a fancy sciencey word, semi-permeable, that means it's porous. It means it has tiny little holes in it that molecules and atoms can fit through. One type of molecule that just loves semi-permeable membranes is water, H2O. And a special type of diffusion that is really important in biology, 
really, really important in biology, is called osmosis. Osmosis tends to be poorly explained very often by science teachers. And I, on behalf of science teachers everywhere, I apologize. It's not our fault. It kind of is our fault. But you have to understand that osmosis, because it's so important in biology, we kind of take it for granted as science teachers because we've learned it already and we understand it. And we're like, well, yeah, that just makes total sense. And it's not always, we don't always do a good job of making sure students understand what osmosis is. So I'm going to do my best. It's really not that hard. Okay. Just remember, uh, osmosis is a special kind of diffusion that occurs with water diffusing across a semi-permeable membrane. So if I have water and if it is diffusing across a semi-permeable membrane, like a cell membrane or any kind of, it could be an artificial one made of plastic, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it'll happen anytime that I put a semi-permeable membrane in the water, water's going to diffuse across it, and we call that osmosis. But there are a couple of things you need to understand about how osmosis works. So imagine I have a container, and it's like a glass. And in the middle of the glass, I have a semi-permeable membrane, dividing the glass into two different sides. And on one side of that glass, I let's say I put fresh water. And let's say just for the fun of it, I put salt water on the other side of the membrane. So the glass is divided in two, and I have fresh water on one side, salt water on the other. In between the two sides, I have a semi-permeable membrane, which again, just a um, divider with little tiny microscopic holes in it that molecules can travel through, like little doors. What's going to happen? Well, in the case of osmosis, which is water diffusing across that membrane, the water is in a way, it's kind of attracted. Think of it as though it is attracted to the impurities on the other side. And because of that, it creates osmotic pressure, which is just a big fancy way of saying that the water moves from the side of fresh, the fresher side to the less fresh side. It's trying to even out the n amount of freshness. It's like, that side's less fresh. Let me go over there and make it more fresh. So in the case of osmosis, water diffuses across a membrane from the fresher side to the less fresh side, as though it is attracted to the impurities, whether it's salt or sugar or whatever. Okay. Well, this is important in cells because sometimes... The inside of the cell has, is less pure and has more impurities. And sometimes the outside of the cell has more impurities. So the water is going to go from the side that is fresher to the side that is less fresh. So, for example, if you drink fresh water, then that fresh water is going to be absorbed into your cells because your cells are going to have they're going to be more impure on the inside. And so the water is going to be attracted to those impurities. It's going to go across. It's going to diffuse across the cell membrane from the fresher side to the less fresh side. And that's going to supply your cells with fresh water. What happens if you drink salt water, though? If you drink salt water, the opposite's going to happen. You're actually going to become more dehydrated. This is why you should never drink salt water. I mean, a little bit's not going to hurt you, but don't drink salt water, okay? Because it's not going to diffuse into your cells. Instead, it's going to cause the water in your cells to diffuse out of your cells. It's going to dry them out, and they are going to become even more, you're going to become even more thirsty, okay? So uh, osmosis allows water to move across the cell membrane, and your body uses that for a lot of different reasons. Now, let's talk about passive and active transport. Most movement across the cells happens with diffusion or within the most movement within a cell and across the cell membrane happens with either diffusion or osmosis. However, there are some exceptions because sometimes that's not going to work. You're 
body, your cells might need to uh, pump certain things in or out of them that are going against a gradient and against the uh, pressure. And so they're going to have to use energy. So first of all, let's talk about um, passive transport. Passive transport refers to any time a substance is either diffusing or, or via osmosis is coming in or out of the cell naturally. It requires no energy from the cell. Think of passive transport as like riding a bicycle down a hill. It requires no energy. It's easy. You sit on the bike and you go zoom, flying down the hill, and you don't have to use up your precious energy. That is passive transport. Okay. In a cell, it's when diffusion and osmosis occur naturally without the cell expending any energy. Active transport is more like riding your bicycle up a hill. And it tires you out. And you're like, why in the heck did I ride down the hill? Now I have to ride back up and I'm so tired. Um, or at least that's what I think when I do that. So active transport uses proteins that act as pumps. And they pump. Uh, chemicals or things, substances in and out of the cell. Okay, so that's active and passive transport. So we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about diffusion, which is the natural spreading out of things that happens everywhere, not just in your cells, but everywhere. We've talked about osmosis, which is a special kind of diffusion where uh, there has to be a semi-permeable membrane separating two sides and the thing that is going across that membrane is water and it moves from the area of where it's more pure towards the area where it's less pure and we have talked about active and passive transport hi guys thanks for watching my video these rambling science videos where i go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your, uh, your science student. So sign up. Subscribe to the channel and I release lots of videos also in addition to these ones lots of little uh, Short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face But they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted So you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh, Subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye